Hi, I'm Dan Carter Passi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale GSC Heavy Duty Depressed Center Flat Car from Class 1 Model Works. Class 1 Model Works offers this car in several paint schemes with railroad specific details. My car is decorated for Santa Fe. The theoretical MSRP for all versions of this car is $71.49. I bought my car for $64.99 direct from Class 1 Model Works. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The model comes in a cardboard box. Opening the outer lid reveals a clear plastic window showing the car. The lid has magnetic catches to hold it closed. Inside, a two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. This cradle is a little unusual in that the model is stored at an angle. These cars have a known issue with warping. Class 1 Model Works has a video of their own about it and how to fix it. The problem is easiest to see with a straight edge laid across the top of the car. It's hard to see, but the deck is only touching the straight edge at the extreme ends. Near the middle, there's a slight gap. Though this isn't too bad on my particular car, a new model shouldn't have issues out of the box, so I'm taking 5 points. It's not likely that the box design had anything to do with the warped deck. So despite that, this is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. The cradle design would make the box a little difficult to reuse if the car had a load, however. My research indicates that ATSF 90000 was the only car in the FTX class. According to the Class 1 Model Works website, GSC supplied kits for these 125-ton capacity cars to various railroads. Santa Fe 90000 was built in the ATSF Topeka shops in 1953. Depressed center flat cars are specialized cars for certain types of heavy, bulky loads. It's not unusual for a railroad only to have a few of them to be used when a normal flat car isn't up to the task. The lowered center section allows the car to carry taller loads. These cars often have more axles than typical freight cars to distribute the weight of heavy loads. Santa Fe 90,000 rides on Commonwealth roller-bearing trucks with three axles each. The car has brake cylinders and brake wheels on both ends. The one on the A end is an auxiliary system for additional braking power. The real cars had brake shoes on all 12 wheels. Thankfully, the car is stenciled to indicate which end is which, as it would be difficult to tell the difference just by looking at the car. I found a photo of the car online showing it's still in use in 1979. There's another photo of the car in the ATSF Color Guide to Freight and Passenger Equipment, which is dated 1962. I suspect the date might be an error since the car has an ACI label in the photo and those weren't required until 1967. Regardless, other than the ACI label, the model is a good match for the photo. In the 1979 photo, after the ACI labels have been phased out, the car has cot stencils in the same area. Both the ACI labels and the cot stencils appear to be mounted on sheet metal plates attached to the sides of the car. Aside from those two things, the model appears to be spot on when compared to the photos. I'm assuming that the model best represents the car as built. Adding either the ACI labels or cot stencils would be an interesting and not too difficult modeling project that would modernize the car. Sheet styrene or thin brass could be used for the plates, and decals are available from Microscale. The paint on the car is opaque and the markings are crisp. Small stencils are legible with magnification. It's a little hard to see, but there's freestanding simulated brake piping on the sides of the car. The car also has detailed jacking pads. The trucks have rotating axle end caps. At the corners, the plastic stirrup steps are separately applied. They appear to be slightly overscale in thickness, a likely concession to durability. The ends have uncoupling levers, freestanding grab irons, air hoses, and vertical brake wheels. On top, the car has simulated wooden decking on the ends. Some similar cars on other railroads had metal grating here, and the Class 1 models reflect that as appropriate. The long perforations on the center section are see-through. The round holes in the center of the deck look like they would be see-through on the real cars, but a metal weight blocks the view on the model. Unless you're viewing the model from just the right angle, this isn't that apparent, and these holes would be shadowed when the car is on the rails anyway. Underneath, the car has brake system detail on both ends, though much of this is over the truck, so it can't be easily seen. The air reservoirs are a notable exception and are visible when looking at the car from the end. The trucks have an unusual off-center pivot, possibly to allow the car to negotiate sharper curves. Be careful of the brake beam detail on the underside of the truck as it's easily dislodged. The trucks have metal wheels with a standard RP25 tread profile. The car has metal knuckle couplers on both ends. Looking for a match on the horizontal center line, the coupler on the A end is high. I don't want to double penalize the car for the same problem. Since it's possible that the coupler height mismatch is due to the warped deck, I'm going to take 5 points provisionally for now. We'll revisit this later. The coupler on the B end is also high. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is no body wobble. The car weighs 3.4 ounces. The NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length is about 5 ounces. Adding a load would be the easiest way to add weight. The car is free rolling. 
The brake beam detail has pins on the ends that fit into tiny holes on the backs of the truck side frames. With a little patience, these can be popped back into place. If you left them off, I don't think most people would notice as they're all but invisible when the car is on the rails. Since those brake beam parts are so easily dislodged, I'm going to remove the trucks before attempting to fix the sag in the car. The car has a die cast metal frame under the plastic body. The fix is to simply bend the car until it's straightened. You can grip both ends near the bolsters, or you can hold the car in the middle and do one end at a time. When the deck is straight, you're done. If you go a little too far, you can bend it back the other way. Check the car end on as well. Mine ended up slightly twisted after bending it, so I had to twist it the other way to make sure both ends lined up. After the fix, unfortunately the A uncoupler is still high. The B uncoupler is also high. That means that the coupler height problem is a separate issue, so I'm going to let the deduction stand. With the truck removed, I'll loosen the screw that holds the draft gear box cover so I can remove the coupler. Next, I'll remove the spring. Since it's my preference, I'm substituting KD number 158 whisker couplers for the originals. The fit ended up being a little tight and the couplers wouldn't move side to side, so I had to use a round file to open up the hole in the coupler shanks just slightly. The coupler height is a little closer to right with the Katie's, but still a bit high. Normally with high couplers, the solution is to either find a way to lower the draft gear boxes or shave material from the bolsters to lower the entire car. With this car though, I don't see a good way to do either of those things. I decided to try something new. I'm going to file some material from the underside of the coupler shanks. It took some trial and error, but that seems to have worked. It's possible that this technique might also work on the stock couplers. I want to pause the review for just a minute and interject some opinion. Um, I know this is kind of a pricey car. Um, like a lot of the cars that I review, they tend to be toward the high end of the spectrum because, you know, I like a lot of detail and such. Um, and every time I review a pricey car, I tend to get a lot of opinions on, on that. Um, one thing I will say is if you're one of those people who wants to have a realistic proportion of rolling stock on your layout, kind of like I do, um, you know, Santa Fe, as best I've been able to determine, only had one of these. They had a few other depressed center flat cars, but it doesn't look like they had a lot of them. And so, you know, one of these might be enough for most people. And, you know, for me anyway, if I only have to buy one of something, that's a little easier to swallow than if I had to buy, you know, 40 or 50 of them to make a unit train. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Let's see what we've got. The car had a warped deck, so I took five points in the packaging category. Both couplers were too high, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 85 out of 100 possible points, which is a solid B on a report card. This is a highly detailed and accurate model that looks really good. I'm giving it a green signal. Overall, I think Class 1 Model Works did a really nice job on this car. If you're looking for a unique piece of rolling stock for your HS scale layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>